One day, Jesus encountered thanklessness while traversing the frontier country that lies between Samaria and Galilee. We find this account in Luke chapter 17. In this passage, it says, Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Jesus is called aside by the plaintive cries of these men that were afflicted with this very serious skin condition that present day translators have referred to as leprosy. And surely they must have thought that if Jesus could cure the blind and heal the lame and raise the dead, then he must have the power to help them as well. They were already outcasts and really had nothing to lose. And so they lifted up their voices in a desperate hope. When he saw them, he said, go and show yourselves to the priest. The master simply tells them to go to the religious leaders of the day. They were the ones that, so to speak, were the referees as to whether a healing had taken place. And any cure, according to the book of Leviticus, would need the equivalent of a seal of approval from the priest so that the formerly unclean could be restored back to society. But were they willing to go? How can they? Because Jesus has done nothing outwardly to assure them of a cure. But this was a trial of their obedience. How would they respond to the Lord's command? Will something in the reputation of Jesus, or perhaps in the way that he looked them in the eye, encourage them to believe that they had met not divine indifference, but God's mercy on the road? To, on the road. And they went, and they were cleansed. And notice the progression here. It says, as they went, they were cleansed. Their obedience was what, were, what produced this healing. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, he came back, praising God in a loud voice, and he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Until this point, the ten lepers had acted together. They had lived together, they cried out together, they'd gone off together, and they had been cleansed together. But now, one comes back. One has this feeling of gratitude and comes back praising Jesus and thanking him for what he has done. And then this Samaritan, still sitting at Jesus' feet, we see three questions being addressed by Christ. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except for this foreigner? Now I must confess, these questions have always somewhat bothered me. At first blush, they seem to reflect almost a childish need for praise and recognition. Why, why did he need to be thanked? Though he already had rewarded their obedience, he wanted something more. He wanted to see if they would show true gratitude for what God had done for them. The nine who did not give thanks were not only rude, but they were ignorant. They were misaligned with the truth. We too are recipients, not the creators of goodness. In acknowledging this simple truth, we realize that the one being in all of the universe for whom seeking his own praise is the ultimately loving act is God Almighty. And given the fact that praise is not an option, it is a joyful inevitability in a world designed and upheld by God, the only question is whether we will add our voices in with these others. Then Jesus said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Friends, gratitude brings benefits in this world and in the world to come. The nine had their cure. The one who gave thanks had his cure, but he also had a relationship with Jesus. This Thanksgiving, let's remember that we are all recipients of God's goodness and remember to praise God from whom all blessings flow. 
Thank you for joining us today. Have a blessed day.